Malaysia has extended its current COVID-19 restrictions until the end of 2020. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South. I'm Laura Palmeiro, and we begin in the Brazilian city of Niteroi in Rio de Janeiro State, which has begun testing a coronavirus vaccine produced by the Chinese pharmaceutical company Sinovac. The trial is being conducted in a partnership between the city government, the Butangtan Institute, and the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation. Five other Brazilian states are participating in the test, with 9,000 volunteers in total. Brazil has reported more than 3.9 million coronavirus cases and more than 121,000 deaths, making it the second worst hit country in the world after the United States. Some 800 of the city's healthcare workers have already applied to participate in the study as volunteers to receive the vaccine. Three tests for COVID-19 were previously done. Actually, I did 12 tests for COVID. I haven't had contact with the virus yet, besides being on the front line. So I was eligible to take the vaccine. We have participated and we are confident with the result, so it can solve our public health problem, not only in Brazil, but in the world. Here in Niteroi, we believe that due to the history of the city, especially in the battle against the pandemic and in the cooperative program for testing, we will be one of the first cities to develop a pilot project to vaccinate the population. The Brazilian Institute for Space Research informed on Sunday that the country's Amazon registered about 30,000 fire focus in August, being the second highest in a decade in that period that marks beginning fire season. The number of fires reported were almost as in 2019, when fires increased at 220 percent year on year during the same month. Yet, the fire focus across Brazil has increased at 0.7 percent along this year, with 91,130 fires recorded. This year, the fire has been concentrated in the center west of the country, hitting more strongly than Pantanal, which is shared with Bolivia and Paraguay, but with 56 percent of its surface on Brazilian soil. According to Brasilia Climate Observatory, during the period of action of the Army in the Amazon deforestation alerts were 34 percent higher than in 2019, appointing as negligent the measures taken by the Brazilian government, which aimed to send military personnel to prevent further focus fires since May. In Ecuador, the National Electoral Council has blocked former President Rafael Correa from standing as a candidate for vice president in the election set for February next year, arguing that he did not fulfill the in-person requisite to file his candidacy. The move came following a sudden last-minute change to the candidate registration rules, which Correa stressed were specifically designed to prevent his participation in the presidential elections. The Electoral Council published an official list on Tuesday recognizing 13 candidates for president and 12 for vice president. Correa stressed that he was in contact with the Council via video link for two hours in order to conduct the process to accept his candidacy. But the latest move represents the continuation of the political persecution. to grant a presidential pardon to right-wing figures who had been jailed or had legal cases open against them. He stressed that the move was sought to ensure peace and a national dialogue ahead of the parliamentary elections in December. I ask for understanding. I know what I'm doing and I ask for your support. I ask for the understanding of the whole country, of all Venezuelans. I ask for understanding and I ask for support for this path of peace. I know what I'm doing. I ask. And the Venezuelan president also noted that a plan was approved by the White House to hire a group of sneakers that aimed assassination of him. Donald Trump approved that they kill me, that they kill me. Listen, Donald Trump approved it, and they are trying to move a group of snipers 
or to pay a group of snipers in Venezuela to kill me. Donald Trump decided it and activated the plan. He has no ethics. He's a far-right extremist. Donald Trump. Train guards of Guatemala's El Infiernito Maximum Security Prison were released on Tuesday after being taken hostages by prison inmates. The Ministry of the Interior claimed that the inmates involved were members of the Mara 18 gang. Ministry spokesman Vinicio Pacheco noted that the release was conducted in a peaceful manner at the prison located in the south of the country. The inmates had taken the guards hostage on Monday in response to the transfer of about 40 leaders of the criminal organization to other prisons across the country. Prison system spokesman Carlos Morales noted that the gang members controlled the extortion of traders, taxi drivers and transporters from the prison. And we'll be right back after this very short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. Protesters in New York take part in the No Eviction, No Police National Day of Action as the coronavirus crisis leaves millions at risk of homelessness. Families who have not been able to pay their rent because of the coronavirus crisis and who daily face the possibility of eviction took to the streets to raise their voices and ask the government for solutions to their situation. Governor Cuomo's latest executive order to ban evictions ends on October 5 and could put tenants to who have been unable to pay rent since April at risk. My husband got infected in March. I paid for the month of April, but from April until now, I haven't been able to pay the rent. It's not that we don't want to pay the rent, but we don't have jobs right now. I truly believe the moratorium should remain intact until this pandemic is fully suppressed. And I mean suppressed where there is a successful vaccine or a cure. Because New York City has been hit heavy. It was a first wave. We're preparing for a second wave. It's September now. It's flu season. We don't know what's going to happen. And people need to be safe. Authorities in Los Angeles has declared a state of emergency after the shooting of the African-American Dijon Kissy. Protesters gathered in Los Angeles on Tuesday after cops shot and killed a black man after stopping him for allegedly violating traffic rules while riding a bicycle. Police said he dropped a handgun shortly after punching an officer in the face. According to protesters, the police left Kissy's body on the ground for hours afterward, and those at this scene, including that the chapter of Black Lives Matter, reported about how he was still there after eight hours after he was killed. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has condemned the sanctions imposed on the Belarusian government by several Western states, stressing that Belarusian must solve their internal affairs without foreign intervention. It's obvious that there are problems that need to be discussed, but we believe it is unacceptable in the modern world for our Western colleagues to play the role of judges and deliver verdicts right away by imposing sanctions or other threats. We are convinced that we Belarusian people have all the possibilities to solve this problem by themselves. In my opinion, our Lithuanian neighbors have gone beyond the pale and we believe that they are using not quite democratic political method with Svetlana Tienovskaya. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Ji and his German counterpart Heiko Maas met on Tuesday in Germany to address bilateral relations. The Chinese diplomat took the opportunity to dismiss the German concerns regarding the law of safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Any nation needs a law to protect its national security. Why can't Hong Kong have one? The security affairs of any of the autonomous regions are handled by the central government, which has the power on the issue. 
Why must Hong Kong be different? It is not true that China is blocking the progress of the bilateral investment treaty negotiations. On the contrary, China is pushing forward the negotiations. Even during the epidemic, we made all efforts to accelerate the talks with the EU countries. I can tell you that the negotiations are now at the final stage. The most difficult problems have either been resolved or have seen the ways of resolving. China is confined about concluding the VIT negotiations by the end of the year. We want the principle of one country, two systems to be fully applied in Hong Kong and the rights guaranteed in the basic law to be respected. And we in the European Union agreed that this will remain our benchmark for development in Hong Kong. At a side event in Geneva ahead of the 75th session of the UN General Assembly, UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, spoke about press freedom as essential to enable democratic, free and participative societies. The safety of journalists and their ability to pursue investigations and disseminate information without censorships or threats is a key element for the realization of the Agenda for Sustainable Development. Indeed, the SDGs explicitly require fulfillment of the right to freedom of information and other fundamental human rights. Women journalists are often at greater risk of being targeted, including through threats of sexual violence and online hate campaigns. And these crimes against journalists, including cases of murder, are frequently addressed by inadequate investigations and prosecution. South Korean health authorities reported 235 new COVID-19 cases on Monday, pushing the total number over 20,000. According to the Korea According to the Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, over one-fifth of the cases reported in the past two weeks cannot be traced, while four in ten cases did not show any symptoms of the virus. Meanwhile, the numbers of patients in a critical condition has climbed to 104, of which 30 percent are aged 60 and above. Authorities have imposed new restrictions given the continued rise in cases, including the closure of private academies and indoor sports facilities. Authorities in Vietnam paid tribute to historic revolutionary leader Ho Chi Minh on Tuesday, ahead of the anniversary of this death and the celebrations to mark the 75th anniversary of independence on September 2nd. For the Vietnamese people, together with representatives of the Communist Party of Vietnam, the National Assembly and the government gathered at the Ho Chi Minh Mausoleum located in Vietnam's capital, Hanoi. Likewise, people laid flowers on the Monument to Heroes and Monastery or Bag Song Street. Commemorative acts are set to take place on Wednesday, including a firework display. The Democratic Republic of Vietnam's first president, Ho Chi Minh, read the Declaration of Independence on September 2, 1945, thus ending years of French colonialism in the country. His death came on the same day in 1969. And we have more stories coming up after this final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Despite daily new local infections being in single digits, Malaysia has extended its current COVID-19 restrictions until the end of 2020. In keeping with the country's ultra-cautious approach, schools and mass businesses have been allowed to reopen and domestic travel is allowed. But social distancing, temperature taking, mask wearing and registering when entering businesses will remain mandatory. The 14-day quarantine at designed centers for restoring Malaysians and long-term visa holders has also been extended. Malaysia has reported over 9,000 cases as of Tuesday, with a total death of toll 128. Always uh, there is a fear, but I think always reminding them the small little things that they need to do, the personal hygiene, the social distancing, the wearing masks all the time. And I think it's becoming a second nature to them and us 
in many ways that I'm grateful even though you know we have to pay a little price our freedom we can't do the normal thing that we have to do but that's a change that we have to adapt for the sake of uh, all Always Nigerian health authorities offered an update on COVID-19 cases this Tuesday. The Nigerian Center for Disease Control confirmed 239 new cases, bringing the total number to over 54,000. Meanwhile, the COVID-19 death toll stands at 1,023, after 10 new fatalities were reported. The areas most affected by the virus are Plateau State with 116 new cases, the Federal Capital Territory with 33, and the city of Lagos with 19 cases. Authorities in Senegal authorized the reopening of universities on Tuesday while calling for the observance of COVID-19 protective measures. The country has reported over 13,000 cases and 284 COVID-19 deaths. From September 1 to October 15, we will be bringing in students in Bachelor 3 and Master 1, which constitutes an enrollment of 20 to 25 percent. With this number of students, it is certain that with the physical reception capacities we have, we will be able to enforce barrier measures. The Che Ganta Diop University of Dakar now has a student body of 78,500, with teaching and research staff, plus administrative, technical and service staff of about 3,000 people. Today I came, but there are no many students. I think that many students do not agree with resuming classes, because of the increasing levels of COVID-19 in Senegal. The Hindu festival of Ganesh Chaturthi came to an end in India this Tuesday. Devotees of country's largest city, Mumbai, observed the festival under strict measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We have celebrated in social distancing, like we came five to 10 people for research, and every year we go 25 to 50 people. This year we came only 5 to 10 people for this research. As we all know, this year because of COVID there are many restrictions on celebrations. We have to follow certain rules laid down by the authorities for immersion so that places like Shopati Beach are not overcrowded. They have made temporary ponds like this for immersion so that it's easy for the public. This year people are just not coming here to the sea. Everyone is doing the measures at home in a pound or using a flower pot or something to do it. It's not like this in other years. Normally there is a large crowd. This year it's all gone because of COVID. This is the one festival that is celebrated the most in Mumbai. That's why it's special. No other festival is celebrated so much in Mumbai. Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, the Malian president ousted in a military cop last month, was hospitalized this Tuesday. Major concern raises over the health condition of the 75-year-old politician as he had been recently detained for 10 days by the junta, now in power of the West African country. The ousted president was transferred to a private clinic where he is receiving medical assistance. However, his health condition was not immediately known. Heavy seasonal rains have caused severe flooding in Sudan, resulting in vast damage to infrastructure, including access to clean water, which is critical in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. The United Nations reported on Tuesday that thousands of people, including displaced citizens, refugees and host communities in Sudan, have been affected after the heavy rains caused the waters of rivers Nile to rise nearly 17.5 meters, the highest level in 100 years, according to Sudanese authorities. Many of those affected have been previously displaced by conflict and were already facing loss of income due to the economic challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic. Access to clean water, which is critical to preventing the spread of COVID-19, has also been affected. According to initial assessments, around 2,000 water sources are contaminated or non-functional. ...measures such as regular hand washing. Some health facilities have been affected in total. Uh, this is particularly in East Sudan, White Nile, Darfur and Khartoum. And many are in urgent need of shelter and other emergency assistance. 
Rains have been particularly heavy in North Darfur, leaving an estimated 35,000 internally displaced people, locals and refugees in need of help. And, and also 15 people have tragically died and a further 23 are missing. The damage to infrastructure has been devastating. Roads have become too muddy for traffic to pass making it extremely difficult or impossible to deliver humanitarian aid to some communities, particularly in Blue Nile, where humanitarian agencies are unable to reach some 5,700 people needing humanitarian assistance. Turkish authorities addressed the latest situation in the eastern Mediterranean on Tuesday as tensions mount with Greece over energy exploration in disputed waters. Despite Turkey's continuing to insist on its right to resources in the area, authorities stated they were open to joint negotiations with all parties involved. Our activities in the eastern Mediterranean and the Aegean have the pursuit of rights and justice at heart attempts to imprison Turkey to its shores using a four square mile island without seeing its tremendous 300,000 square mile size is a very open expression of injustice and iniquity. Efforts to descend on the reaches of the Mediterranean, which are the rights of every country around it. is an example of modern-day colonialism. We favor a joint solution that involves sitting around the table to negotiate with all sides in the Eastern Mediterranean for everyone to benefit from the Eastern Mediterranean's resources in a just manner or for the sharing of resources fairly. Unfortunately, we were forced to take the necessary steps because Greece did not listen to our call and took unilateral steps. And we have come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at Telesur English. Net. Join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Laura Palmeiro. Thank you for watching.